A pendulum with a mass of 0.7 kilograms is released from a vertical height of 41 millimeters. Okay, so there is our 41 millimeters, our um, 0.7 kilogram mass released okay, to swing. At the lowest point of the swing, it collides for a 0.07 seconds, so for a brief split second, it collides with a rubber ball of mass 126 grams that is at rest on a frictionless table. The rubber ball then travels at a velocity of 1.52 meters per second after the collision. So after it collided, this rubber ball is heading in that direction at 1.52 meters per second. Okay, first question, calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the pendulum as it hits the rubber ball. In other words, when that pendulum reaches the lowest point, okay, what is its velocity? And again, we are using the fact that the me initial mechanical energy will be equal to the final mechanical energy. Okay, initial mechanical energy is released from rest, so initial mechanical energy is simply equal to the initial potential energy. And at the bottom, it doesn't have height anymore, which means that the final uh, mechanical energy will simply be equal to the final kinetic energy. Okay, so let's fill that out. So we know that the initial mechanical energy will equal the final mechanical energy and the initial mechanical energy is equal to the initial potential energy and the in final mechanical energy will equal the final kinetic energy okay because initial kinetic energy will be zero and final kinetic en uh, potential energy will be zero this is why I have that uh, result okay and what is the potential energy is mass times gravity times height and on the right hand side we have half mass times uh, sorry half mass times velocity squared okay so again we can see we can just divide mass on both sides away so mass won't make a difference and uh, we know this actually mass doesn't make a difference of an object's velocity when it is falling the 9.8 is gravity the height is 41 millimeters remember millimeters must be divided by a thousand to get me 0, 0.041 is equal to a half times 0 0.7 times the velocity squared so I find that the velocity squared is equal to okay what is it equal to? So um, on the left hand side I have 0 0.7 that's multiplied by 9.8 and also multiplied by 0 0.041. Okay, so on the right hand side, left hand side, that's what I get. This must still be divided because I have to put divide both sides with the coefficient of v squared by 0 0.5 and also be divided by 0 0.7. Okay, and I get 0, 0.8036, 0, 0.8036, but that is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for velocity, not velocity squared. So velocity, at this point, I take the square root and I get 0 0.896, so 0 0.9 okay, is equal to plus minus 0, 0,9 meters per second. Now the plus minus doesn't help us much. All we know is that that is the velocity in the or towards the. So let's just make it positive and give direction by saying towards the rubber ball. Okay, and that is question A. Question B. In the second question, we are asked to calculate the height that the pendulum reaches after it collided with the ball. Okay, so if we go back to our sketch, 
we saw that it collides with the ball at a velocity of 0.9 meters per second okay and after it collides um, obviously the rubber ball is now shooting away in that direction but the ball still has motion even after it hits the rubber ball it might it might stand still or it might still be going in that direction or it might even be bouncing back after it hits the rubber ball so what we notice is that we are concerned with what happens before a collision and after a collision and hopefully that reminds you of preservation of momentum okay and we had that the momentum before must be equal to the momentum after and in this case we see that initially we had two objects that were separate and afterwards the two objects are still separate okay so it is a hit and scatter or a hit and bounce so before we had the mass or we had the momentum of uh, the pendulum plus the momentum of the ball and after we had the momentum so this is initial and after we had the momentum of the pendulum plus the momentum of the ball now why am I talking why do I uh, use momentum when I'm trying to find the height that the pendulum reaches well I need to know what velocity it has um, in order to work out high, how high it can go so that is why I'm taking this route in case you didn't know so what was the momentum of the pendulum initially well we talk when we say talk about initially we don't mean right here at the top it had no momentum there we're talking about right before the collision okay it was traveling at a velocity of 0.9 meters per second and it has a mass so uh, momentum mass times velocity is 0 0.7 kilograms times 0 0.9 meters per second what about the ball well it was standing still so its momentum was zero okay afterwards what is happening afterwards well afterwards its mass is still 0 0.7 but its velocity its final velocity after the collision that's what we're trying to calculate how about the ball well this time the ball is traveling at a certain velocity and they told us it's traveling at 1.52 meters per second okay so afterwards it's traveling at 1.52 meters per second but what is its velocity let's see what is its uh, mass I mean 126 grams okay so 126 grams that in terms of kilogram is 0, 0.126 kilograms sorry for that uh, squeezing in there okay now with this in mind we need to solve for the future velocity in other words taking our calculator we are subtracting this on either side and then dividing with 0 0.7 so we have 0.7 times 0.9 okay subtract from that 0.126 times 1.52 gives me 0.43848 and that must be divided by 0.7 and we get 0.6264 so our future velocity is let's get that again 0.626 so 0, 0.63 meters per second S since it's positive it's still going in that direction the moment after that collision so how high does it go well now we are able to calculate the since since there was now a force um, act okay and now in order to go and calculate the height that it reaches we would love to use this formula that 
that the potential energy is mass times gravity times height. This will help if we know what the potential energy would be at its maximum height. Okay, but we do know what the potential energy would be at the maximum height because we have the kinetic energy as it's going upwards. Okay, we can calculate that kinetic energy. The potential energy would be zero and at the top it would be the converse where the kinetic energy is zero and the potential energy can be calculated. But again, in all of this system that is what we're calculating the mechanical energy. The mechanical energy must be constant. So whatever we get is the kinetic energy at the bottom must be the potential energy at the top. It's as simple as that. So what do we get? What is the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy for this um, is the initial kinetic energy is equal to a half times the mass of 0, 0,7 times its initial velocity as it's going up uh, for the second part of its journey at 0, 0,63 meters per second squared. Okay, and what do we get? Point 0.5 times point 0.7 times point 0.63 squared then we get 0 0.130, 0 0.13895. That's going to be 0, 0,14 joules. Okay, and that means our potential energy at the top. In other words, our final potential energy must also be 0, 0,14 joules which means that we have mass times gravity times height is equal to this potential energy at the top mass being 0 comma 7 gravity being 9 comma 8 and the height is what we are trying to calculate okay so 0 comma 1 4 if we take point 0.14, we divide it by point 0.7 and we also divide by point 0.98 not point 0.98, 9.8 9 9.8 we get 0 0.02 so height is 0 0.02 meters and since we actually we were working in decimal, sorry not decimal, millimeters, we're working in millimeters so we can round to three decimal places okay and then this what comes after the comma will tell me what millimeters I'm working with or just multiply with a thousand that is 20 millimeters. The next question asks us is it an elastic collision? Now you must know what an elastic collision is in order to answer this question a elastic, elastic collision is when the total uh, kinetic energy before is equal to the total kinetic energy after. Okay, then it is elastic. Elastic has got nothing to do about rubber. Okay, uh, it, well, not an elastic collision at least. Okay, it doesn't mean at all that it's bouncing or anything like that. Elastic means that the total kinetic energy before is equal to the total kinetic energy after. Now before we had the kinetic energy of the pendulum plus the kinetic energy of the ball. After we had the kinetic, so this is before, before, or initial, initial is probably better. Initial, initial, and afterwards we have the kinetic energy of the pendulum. Um, after plus the kinetic energy of the <laughs> again it should be final final plus the kinetic energy of the ball final so what is the kinetic energy of the pendulum before now when I say before I mean the moment before it connects okay the moment just before it connects and we knew that it was traveling at 0.9 meters per second okay so it was a half 
times the mass was 0 0.7 times 0 0.9 squared plus the ball wasn't traveling at all it was stationary so its kinetic energy was 0 now is that the same is it equal to or is it not equal to let's see on the right hand side what we get on the right hand side well afterwards okay we've worked out the kinetic the, the, the velocity of the pendulum afterwards it was traveling at 0.63 meters per second okay so after the connection it was traveling at 0 0.63 0 0.63 okay squared plus and the ball was traveling at uh, was first it has a weight of one point uh, zero point one two six kilograms and afterwards the ball was traveling at one point five two meters per second now I hope you know where I got that from that was in the question okay one point five two after the collision the rubber ball then travels there you go that's after the collision so what do we have and again that is squared let's see what do we get on the left hand side and the right hand side okay on the left hand side we get 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 0.9 squared is equal to 0.2835 0 0.2835 okay let's see if that's the same as what we get on the right hand side we have 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.63 squared plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.126 times 1.52 squared is equal to 0 0.2844 0 0.2844 Four. Now, in a lot of these, we had to round. So if we round here as well, 0, 0.28 and 0, 0.28, we notice, look at that, the kinetic energy before is equal to the kinetic energy after. So yes, it is elastic. I'll calculate the magnitude of the force that the pendulum exerted on the ball during the collision. Now there's so many formulas that you can use. I am going to simply use the formula that um, the force exerted, sorry not the delta force, the net force exerted is equal to the change of momentum over the change in time. okay so the change of momentum we're talking about the rubber ball its final momentum minus its initial momentum divided by the change in time that's how long that collision lasted how long did that collision last okay let's go see according to my question the collision it collided for 0 0.07 in other words the amount of contact time that's the only time the one ball the pendulum actually could um, exert a force on the rubber ball the time they were in contact uh, so that's that so 0 0.07 okay that's the change in time change in time okay the future momentum of that ball was 0 0.126 times its future velocity of 1.52 okay minus its initial uh, momentum was simply 0 because it was not traveling at all okay and that time was 0 0.07 and what do we get as our final answer 0.126 times 1.52 minus 0 is equal to there we go that's our numerator divided by our denominator and we get 2.74 newtons 2.74 newtons and that is the amount of force that the ball exerted 
uh, sorry, that the pendulum exerted on the ball. Cool. That was a long question, um, but definitely an exam type question. And therefore, make sure you understood everything that happened in this one. See you later.